This video is going to be dealing with a practice concept that I like to call octaves of tempo. And this is an idea that I got from attending a masterclass with a fantastic sax player called Bob Reynolds. Uh, some of you might be familiar with him. He's played with a bunch of people, including John Mayer, and he is currently a touring and recording member of Snarky Puppy. So you may well have heard his playing, even if you don't know who he is. Anyway, worth checking out. He's got tons of great videos on his YouTube channel, uh, and it's nice to see that even the best musicians out there still are obsessive and neurotic in the same way that I am. Anyway, this idea, Oxys of Tempo, I found it really useful the last couple of years that I've been implementing it and I think it will be beneficial to you guys as well. So, one of the things that I find a lot of my students struggle with is this idea of practicing an idea slowly enough. Most people, when they learn something new, they want to storm into it at their technical ceiling and play it as fast as possible straight away, which doesn't really help anyone get anywhere. So this idea of octaves of tempo centers around keeping a 60 BPM pulse going for an entire practice session, but using that pulse to derive different subdivisions, playing a concept that you might be practicing in different subdivisions to work on your time and your sound. So here's what I mean. I'm going to take just a series of diatonic arpeggios, so it's just the arpeggios that we derive from the major scale. I'm going to play it in the key of D major and I'm going to play it on two strings working horizontally up the bass because I'm a big fan of playing horizontal ideas because they're really difficult. Horizontal shifting on a bass is a thing that's really hard to do well, I think. And what I want to do here, I'm going to start by playing quarter notes at 60 BPM and my concern here is chiefly the time and the sound. So I'm going to be internally subdividing each metronome click into triplets and I'm still playing quarter notes so there's my tempo so I'm thinking about triplets the whole time triple, triple. so that's what I'm feeling I'm just going to play diatonic arpeggios of D major on the A and the D strings ascending up the neck in quarter notes here we go As I'm playing that, I can feel and hear that sometimes I'm not completely burying the click, I'm flamming occasionally. And this is a really good exercise for just checking in on the fundamentals of technique and time and sound and just making sure that everything is where it should be or where you want it to be. So I would spend probably a disproportionately long amount of time practicing that sort of thing in quarter notes. And once I'm completely happy that everything is watertight in terms of the sound and the technique, I then keep the tempo the same but switch to the next subdivision, which would be eighth notes. So here, although I'm playing eighth notes, I'm still subdividing using a smaller rhythmic subdivision. I'm going to use sixteenth notes. So I'm going to be feeling one E and a two E, and I'm still going to play eighth notes though. It's going to sound like this. Once I've become comfortable with that, I play it all over the bass in as many different keys as possible, just to make sure everything's in place. From there, I can move from eighth notes to eighth note triplets. So here, triple, 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 triple. So 
So there, if I wasn't doing this for YouTube, I would go back and fix that because a lot of these things were quite dodgy and not quite up to standard. So the first thing I played was not in at all. I was dragging quite a lot. Great idea to record your practice. This is one of the benefits of making videos to throw at the internet is you learn a lot about the holes in your playing of which there might be many. So normally I would spend, again, a long amount of time working on that in triplets until it was completely uh, bulletproof, let's say. From there, if you haven't had enough of this by now, you can move from triplets to 16th notes. Again, still playing the same concept. And again, one E and a two E and a. So I just played the same thing at the same tempo, but I've derived different subdivisions from that one pulse. And that has given me a much better internal clock workout than simply playing an idea with a metronome and then bumping it up by a few BPM until I reach my technical ceiling, which is what most people tend to do. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then feel free to become a triple threat by smashing that like button, leaving me a comment and subscribing to the channel. You can also check out my website, freebasetranscriptions.com by hitting the link below. There you can find over 200 transcriptions of both classic and contemporary bass lines, along with lessons, gear demos, and you can pick up a copy of my book, Better Bass Practice, which is a book about playing the bass that contains no music, but it does contain lots and lots of helpful strategies that I've been using for the last 10 years or so uh, in order to get the most out of my practice time at the bass.